You probably know that going to university costs money, and you may know that you can get loans to cover the costs involved. But how much are those costs? How do the loans work, and when will you have to pay them back? Are there any other sources of funding for your time at university? In this video, we'll look at the different costs involved with attending university, the support that's out there for you, and talk you through how the student loan system works. Most of this information is exactly the same whichever English university you go to, but there are some things that each individual university does differently. We'll cover what UCL has to offer to support our students financially. The details of the costs of university and how the funding system work are different in Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland and outside of the UK. So if you live or are planning to study anywhere outside of England, make sure you research the relevant details to you. There are two main types of costs associated with going to university. Tuition fees, the money you need to pay to the university in order to attend. And maintenance costs, the amount you will be living on while you study. So how much are each of these and how can you cover them? Firstly, tuition fees. The maximum a university in England can charge a UK or EU student per year is £9,250, and virtually all English universities do charge the same annual amount. So it doesn't matter where in the country you study, the tuition fees costs will be the same. So how much do you need to pay before you can start a university? Nothing at all. Your tuition fees are not due until you start your course. So how do you pay it? This is where the first of student loans comes in. You can apply for a loan to cover the full cost of your tuition fees, so you don't need to pay anything up front. For more details about the loan application process, please see the Student Finance England website. The tuition fees are paid directly from the student loans company to your university when you start your course, so you don't need to worry about remembering to pay them. It all happens automatically. Some elements of student finance are what's known as means tested. This means that the amount you receive depends on your household income, usually how much your parents or guardians earn. However, the tuition fee loan is not means tested. Everyone who studies at an English university is entitled to receive a loan for the full amount of their tuition fees for the duration of their course. Maintenance costs are a little more complicated as they cover a whole range of different things. Pretty much anything you can imagine needing to spend money on in order to go about your life at university, including food, rent and bills, entertainment, clothes and getting around. The amount you spend on these things can obviously vary widely depending on the location of your university as well as your own personal spending habits. We estimate that the average UCL student spends around £280 per week on their living costs while at university. Here's a breakdown of what we expect those costs to be. As you can see, the largest proportion of your living costs by far will be rent for your accommodation. After that, food is the biggest expense, followed by travel. So where does this money come from? This is the other kind of loan you can receive. Just like the tuition fee loan, the maintenance loan also comes from the student loans company run by Student Finance England. However, unlike the tuition fee loan, this money comes straight to you, not your university and not your parents. You will be responsible for managing your own money at university. Earlier we brought up means testing, where the amount you receive depends on your household income. And this is where that comes in. The amount you will receive for your maintenance loan does depend on your household income. Usually the less money you have access to at home, the more you will be entitled to through your student loan. You can check how much your loan might be using the government's online student finance calculator. We've already mentioned that this information is for students who study at a university in England, but what if you choose to spend part of your degree studying abroad? If you attend an English university but spend time on a study abroad scheme as part of your degree, you are still entitled to funding from student finance. Loans are not the only sources of funding available. Students who have particular needs that may incur extra costs may be entitled to further funding. This might be to cover costs and equipment associated with a disability, or if you have other people who depend on you financially, such as a child. Some of these circumstances are taken into account when calculating your maintenance loan, but individual universities may also have extra funding available. We'll talk about the additional funds UCL offers later in the video. In order to make sure you access all the funding you can, we recommend that you Start your funding application early. You can apply before your place at university has been confirmed, usually from the spring before you were due to start attending. If you apply late, you may not receive your loan in time for the start of your course. Check what you are eligible for and entitled to. This might involve some frank conversations about money with your family, but if you're equipped with as much knowledge as possible about your household's financial situation, you will be much better prepared to find out about all the sources of funding that you can draw from. So you'll be taking out two student loans, one for tuition fees and one for maintenance costs. But when it comes to repayment, they will be treated as one lump sum. As time goes on, your loans will incur interest, but we'll come back to this point in a second. You won't need to start repaying your loans until you can afford to do so. You don't have to repay a penny until after you have finished at university. Once you've graduated and got a job, you will still only start repaying your student loan once you are earning more than £26,575 a year. Even then, the amount you repay stays in line with your earnings, so your repayments will always be at an affordable rate. 
This is calculated as 9% of whatever you were earning above the minimum threshold. This means it acts more like an extra tax rather than a traditional loan repayment. As you can see, as your income goes up, you'll pay more towards your student loan, but always at the same rate. So if you're earning £1,000 a year over the threshold, your repayments work out as 750 a month. That's less than a Netflix subscription. If your earnings drop back below the threshold, then you stop making loan repayments. It's as simple as that. So remember, how much you repay is always based on how much you're earning at any one time, regardless of how much you owe. After 30 years, any money you still owe is written off, so you don't have to make any more repayments. Even if you're entitled to the largest possible loan and your loan gathers interest over the years, you still repay at the same rate as everyone else and any remaining debt is completely cancelled after 30 years. It's predicted that only a very small number of graduates will ever earn enough to fully repay their loans, so most people will end up paying in less than they borrowed in the first place, before having the rest of the debt written off. As we've said, as well as the funding available to all students nationally, each university may also have their own funds available. This is what UCL offers its students. UCL is a bursary that all eligible undergraduate students will receive automatically. This is means tested with the amount varying depending on your household income. The maximum you could receive is £2,500 every year you are studying at UCL. As a bursary rather than a loan, this is free money that you don't have to pay back. UCL also offers a wide range of scholarships, around 100 in total. These are just three examples that you might wish to apply for. As you can see, the amount of money you can receive varies, as do the eligibility requirements. For a full list of all the scholarships you could be eligible for, you can complete a quick eligibility check on the UCL website. When it comes to scholarships, we recommend that you check what's available as early as possible to make sure you don't miss any deadlines and so you know what applications you may have to submit. You may as well apply for as many different scholarships as you can, as long as you're eligible. There's no reason why you might not receive more than one. As with the maintenance loan, you will need to know about your household income as many scholarships are means tested. The government has several useful online resources with more information about student funding. For international students, the UK Council for International Student Affairs has an advice line you can call for further support. There's also more information about fees and funding at UCL on the UCL website, including the online eligibility check for scholarships. If you have any specific queries, you can email us at studentfunding at ucl.ac.uk.